Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now I often get messages regarding cheap PCs and components and sometimes I get build suggestions or challenges. A week or so ago I received a message that said to Mr. Random Gaming, put together the cheapest PC you can that will play games like CSGO and Valorant. It can look super ugly and the resolution is not important, as long as both games run with at least 30 frames per second. Well thankfully both of those games are fairly easy to run and 30 FPS isn't a big ask. Though I must warn you I may have taken the super ugly part a little too far, as I didn't even factor a case into this build. Can it still be called a gaming PC if the components just sit on your desk exposed to dust and other elements? Well, I'm going to say yes. After all, the performance won't be affected unless I spill a cup of tea all over it. The spend here was about £20, roughly $25 or €22. Euros. The motherboard bundle came from an online PC breakers selling through eBay. It received no other bids apart from mine which came to £11. The reason being is that it was untested which can put people off. Listing something as untested can sometimes be a way for a seller to get rid of a product with little risk because even if they know that it doesn't work, they don't have to accept refunds. Luckily, this whole bundle works fine at the moment and consists of an AMD A6 3650 quad-core CPU with 8 gigs of RAM and integrated HD 6530D graphics. The power supply is a 450 watt no-name explosion waiting to happen and the one terabyte hard drive turned up out of the blue from the same seller who it turns out had messaged me asking if I wanted this as well as they didn't want to throw it away. I only noticed this offer after it arrived and I'm now extremely suspicious as to why they wanted to get rid of this so badly. Thankfully I won't actually be using it as my games are all installed on my SSD. It's just there to show you that I do have a storage device factored into this build but no case. Now, the words gaming PC will certainly be in open and closed quotation marks in the title, as I'm not sure how it will perform. Now, because of the lack of a case, uh, this will be acting as the power button. It's simply a matter of shorting the two power pins to boot this super janky build into action. Now, I won't lie, I'm not extremely proud of my creation, but hopefully I've met the criteria for this challenge. What I want to add quickly here is that getting the drivers to work with Windows 10 for this APU was a nightmare. You have to install the 15.6 beta drivers for Windows 8.1, otherwise there'll be an installation error, despite the AMD site saying newer software is supported. You can also update the drivers through Windows Update with this CPU if you want to, which makes things a little more hassle free. Before we try out any games, let's talk about the CPU part of this APU's performance. A few videos ago, we tested the Intel Celeron G5900 10th Gen chip, and the reason I bring that up is because this CPU scores quite closely to that one. The 3650 is a first gen APU on the FM1 socket, and when it came out in 2011, it really wasn't anything special back then, but it did allow those of us who couldn't afford a discrete graphics card to play games, just like the Ryzen APUs continue to do today. So let's see if it can handle what should be a couple of fairly easy to run titles. CSGO at 1080p runs with at least 30 frames per second, which is a good start, and sometimes the frame rate will get up closer to 50. I'm sure most would argue that this really isn't suitable for a competitive game like CSGO, and I'd be inclined to agree to some extent, but it's a better experience than I initially thought we'd get with a near 10-year-old APU. The onboard 6530D graphics are probably comparable to an HD 6450 on the AMD side of things, and a GT520 on the NVIDIA side of things, though I think the 6530D integrated graphics are a little better than the AMD 6450, but about the same as the 520. We'll be seeing how a discrete card benefits this processor a little later on, should you have a bit more of a budget to play with. If we switch to 720p in CSGO then our frame rate will improve, though a solid 60fps still isn't doable. We're seeing an average of between 40 and 50 here, though at some moments the game did hit 60. 
Playing on a system like this takes me back. I had the A4 3300 which was the slower dual core version of AMD's first Lano chips and I used it to play games like Fallout 3 at 800 by 600 on my 1024 by 768 monitor about 9 years ago. Speaking of which, this quad core A6 will do a better job at running both Fallout 3 and New Vegas with over 30 FPS at full HD. Moving on to Valorant now, and it seems that this game really does run on even the weakest of systems. We put together a minimum system requirements build before for this game, and I found that it runs quite well, and it's quite lenient hardware-wise. Even here on the A6 and nothing but the HD 6530D, we were getting a pretty decent experience that often came close to 60fps. I experienced no severe frame drops or stutters, apart from one occasion where my internet dropped or something, but... That had nothing to do with the hardware itself. 720p is again a better bet and here 60fps is a common sight. The frame rate will even go up to and beyond the low 80s. There will be a few noticeable dips, once again this time around due to the increased load on the CPU, which will be near 95-100% to utilisation due to the increased strain thanks to the uh, drop in resolution to 1280 by 720 so for £20, this machine, although awful in a lot of ways, can still handle a couple of easy-to-run titles with the best experience coming from playing older games. Before adding a discrete GPU, I fired up GTA 5 for a brief spell and managed to squeeze about 25 FPS from the system by turning everything down to low. GTA Online, on the other hand, well, the less said about that, the better. But what about the A6 3650 as a processor? What if you had a chip like this on the FM1 platform and were looking to add a graphics card to it? Can the CPU keep up? Well, I added a Radeon 5500 XT into the mix to test just that. Will the CPU severely bottleneck this modern entry level card and if so, how badly? Now obviously adding a card like this will push the budget way over our initial £20. The thing is, adding a graphics card like this or any modern entry level GPU for that matter to a system featuring an FM1 processor will likely mean that a lot of gaming potential is wasted because of the limitation imposed by the CPU. The A6 is holding the 5500 back but that being said, if you've been using an older system like this without a graphics card for a while, you'd likely still be thankful for the increase in performance and the processor and motherboard combo could be upgraded a little later down the line. Now I chose this CPU and motherboard for the purpose of a cheap as possible challenge but in actual fact it's hard to recommend this platform in 2020 because FM1 boards can be quite hard to find and overpriced in some scenarios. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this fun attempt at building a super cheap gaming PC. I'll be putting together a better build for the next video which should be a little more capable though. The budget won't be too much higher. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed this video leave a like on it down below, leave a dislike if you didn't, let me know what your first PC was, you know how much you spent on it, what it consisted of in terms of components, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.